Hello friends, uh, there is a video of laparoscopic management of bleeding from cystic artery in a post-op case of laparoscopic cholecystectomy. A 9-year-old girl underwent laparoscopic cholecystectomy in another center. Within 1.5 hours, the patient deteriorated and the BP was 70 by 30, pulse rate 160. So she was shifted to in our hospital. The hemoglobin dropped from 13 to 6, uh, lactate was 5. There is a diagnosis of postoperative bleeding. So I immediately took her inside the um, operation theater. When I went inside, the laparoscope is full of blood. So after sucking out the blood, at least 15 to 20 minutes. Mm, so the most uh, amount of blood was mainly collected in the perihepatic region, but blood was all over the uh, all quadrants of the abdomen. So you can see after going inside, this is the picture after sucking out the blood in the perihepatic and peri uh, in the subhepatoranal pouch. So uh, around uh, 1 to 1.5 liter blood was inside. So I started uh, sucking out the whole of the blood, trying to clear up the hepatoranal pouch uh, from the blood clots so that I could identify the bleeding uh, spot. So most likely because of the blood clots are mostly in the calots area. So you can see there is a sparter. There is a sparter just by the side of the uh, clip of the cystic uh, duct. Most likely is a um, branch of uh, cystic artery or proper uh, cystic artery maybe. So, uh, so I'm just trying to clamp it with my left hand instrument, but uh, it was uh, bleeding. You can see the sparting uh, the artery so immediately i asked for the sister clip so that it looked like uh, i could uh, clip the cystic artery uh, from there so just uh, trying to identify in the point it is bleeding so i placed a clip and the bleeding got controlled luckily so uh, i was ready with the sutures also uh, but uh, initially i tried with the uh, clip and uh, then i placed a gauze inside and we'll put the gauze over that area to keep compression and then uh, while i keep on compressing that area i'll try to suck out uh, rest of the blood in the perihepatic region particularly in hepatorenal pouch so uh, this bleeding from the cystic artery branch was so uh, severe that the patient was uh, patient got deteriorated within uh, in very severely in the post-operative period and uh, her parents shifted uh, that patient from the other hospital to our hospital in the emergency department uh, we uh, immediately i uh, after seeing the patient i decided to go ahead with the uh, diagnostic laparoscopy because uh, the abdomen was distended uh, the patient was severely anemic and there was severe drop in hemoglobin the pre-op hemoglobin was 13 and it dropped to 6 as i said <coughs> so clearly it was a case of uh, bleeding from cystic uh, bleeding from arterial source because venous bleeding would have given some time and it was it should not be that much drastic um, bleeding and uh, so after going inside uh, the most important thing is keep all the uh, uh, things ready the suture the clips and the hemostatic agents all were ready even uh, the blood products were uh, already blood sample was sent for arranging blood but we uh, for this kind of cases where there is severe drop in hemoglobin and deterioration of the, all the blood parameters we could not wait for the blood to come so i went inside our anesthesia team was very strong and uh, they uh, resistri started resuscitating immediately after seeing the patient and they have uh, decided to go ahead with general anesthesia for a laparoscopic uh, exploration so in a nine-year-old girl i just tried to do a laparoscopic uh, because I, uh, that would avoid the uh, morbidity of laparotomy so and uh, <clears throat> and the complications in uh, after uh, of uh, I mean the postoperative complications, chance of postoperative wound complications would high. So after uh, spending much time with uh, clearing the clot, uh, after removing the gauze, you can see the cystic artery. Uh, I mean the cystic duct clips are there. The two clips over there by placed by the initial surgeon. That is uh, most likely the one of another branch of cystic artery. Probably this is the branch which uh, he had uh, divided with the cautery. And uh, later after closure of the abdomen, it started bleeding and most likely there was the anterior or the posterior two branches were there most likely he ligated the posterior branch missed the anterior branch somehow and it started bleeding after deflating the pneumoperitone after the initial uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy so after uh, uh, clearing the hepato uh, perihepatic area and uh, there you can see there is uh, the blood and blood clots in the pelvis in the paracolic gutter everywhere so uh, took uh, normal saline water warm saline water and given lavage 
started giving lava all all through the abdomen and trying to suck out all the blood because this uh, amount of blood if it is uh, if if it is not cleared uh, it could lead to uh, abscess in the post operative period so started giving proper lavage with warm saline water in all quadrants of the particularly in the pelvis here after changing the position in this kind of cases sometimes two monitor inside the operation theater two laparoscopic monitor in the operation theater uh, will help in uh, giving proper uh, lavage in all quadrants so laparoscopy gives an excellent view of all the difficult areas this is the perisplenic area you can see the left uh, uh, subdiaphragmatic area the perisplenic area you can see the blood pool of blood over there so uh, again uh, i'm changing my uh, patient position from head down to left side up head up position so just changing the position you can get access to all quadrants of the abdomen and keep on sucking all the bloods blood clots you can see the huge amount of bleeding was there in that short time and it was uh, uh, because of the arterial bleed that the patient deteriorated so rapidly in the post operative period so um, my uh, take home message would be and the suggestion for my uh, younger colleagues would be that uh, the achieving critical view of safety is very very important and i often see that uh, it is not properly achieved in most of the cases and by most of the surgeons uh, before clipping the structures so it is absolutely very important and uh, until unless you identify all the tubular structures uh, in that area you should not clip any or divide any of the structures it could have been as you know, appear it it could appear that is a small branch which could have been coagulated by cautery but later after deflating the operator it could bleed luckily the patient uh, survived so patient was shifted to icu on a ventilator next day the ventilator was off after uh, giving blood transfusion the hemoglobin got corrected and the patient uh, was started uh, on diet the patient was discharged on post op day 3 and uh, doing well in the follow up period thank you